If you've ever spent any time in the fire service, inevitably you have or will come across that crusty, crabby, old firefighter or paramedic that is just always in a bad mood, that seems like they're constantly pissed off about something, everything sucks, they never smile, and they're miserable to be around. Well, chances are that's a good person. They're just really burned out. So in this video, I wanna talk about six big reasons that firefighters and EMTs get burned out, and then talk about four things that might help and actually make the situation better for you as an individual, or maybe your entire crew. So if you find this stuff useful and you find this helpful, give this video a thumbs up, give it a like, consider subscribing to the channel. Recently over the last week, this channel has really started to take off and that is from all of you. So thank you to all of you that are subscribing and leaving your feedback. I know a lot of current firefighters and retired firefighters are starting to chime in on the, on the comment section. So if you have insight on things that have burned you out or things that you have seen, or even better, if you've suffered from burnout and things that you've done to make it better, leave it in the comments below so people can read through it and see what it's about. Maybe it'll help somebody else out in the fire service or maybe help somebody that's thinking about starting a career in the fire service. So that being said, let's get right into it. The first one that I've seen as a big reason for firefighter burnout is just the repetition of nonsense calls. Now, if you've worked in fire and EMS, and I'm sure police works the same, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Everybody gets into public safety. I shouldn't say everybody, but most people get into public safety because they want to help and they want to do the right thing and they want to be there in an emergency. And when you spend a lot of time on the job and you see how much the 911 system is just utterly abused, how much people use ambulances as taxi rides, how much um, people call for, for nonsensical things, um, that takes a toll on you, right? You, you go into this thinking that you're going to be helping people and doing things and you show up on an EMS call and my toe hurts. Or I called 911 at 3 a.m. because my elbow's been hurting for the last four months. Well, I'm sorry, but that's not an emergency. That's not a 911 call. And if you're unfamiliar with the fire service, I have to tell you that happens all the time. And it will eventually take its toll on you. Now, I think that's for a couple reasons. I think one, just because the pure repetition of doing the same thing again and again and again and again. But also, I think as a fire service, and I don't think Hollywood and the TV shows out there do us any favors, they give you this idea of the fire service as something that it's not. A lot of your calls are going to be very boring, basic calls, but it really, really grinds your gears after a while if you see how much the 911 system is abused. So I think that's a big source of firefighter burnout is just going on the same sort of nonsensical call day after day after day. It's like modern day factory work. Number two is tragedy. Now I've talked about this in the seven reasons you don't want to be, or I'm sorry, seven reasons firefighting might not be for you. I'll link that up here if you haven't seen that video. Um, but dealing with tragedy is something that can be very difficult. And it might, and I don't even necessarily mean tragedy in, in the sense of it's a big, huge event that, you know, you'll never forget this bad thing that happened. Little tragic things that you experience and you see day in and day out on the job. And I've talked about this again in that video where, you know, maybe you go on a call for a full arrest and um, a wife found her husband unresponsive in bed and she's watching you guys do CPR on her husband. You know, that's a that's a sad thing. That's a hard thing to watch is the reaction of this of this wife or this person. Um, and seeing that day in and day out and day in and day out can really callous you over and make you um, make you hard. And it, it just wears on you over time. So the constant, sad, tragic things that you're exposed to can wear a lot of people out. Um, number three, poor leadership. Now, I'm sure there's gonna be some fire officers that see this and get really offended and mad, but it's true. And this is across the board. This is not just going at fire officers. Um, every single job, bad bosses burn out employees like nothing else. Um, whether it's just unfair, unfair, just the way that they treat their employees, just piling work on one person and nothing on another, um, lack of, lack of good, roles or, or a clear path or clear expectations for people that work underneath them. And also for younger firefighters, when they realize that the in some firehouses that there's not a very clear path for advancement. By that I mean, 
I've talked about this in other videos as well, the fire service is very heavily seniority based, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. But I think some places confuse seniority with competence. And you might have a firefighter that hasn't, doesn't have 20 years on the job, but knows far more than a lot of the older guys or a lot of the older girls. A lot of older firefighters don't like to hear that and they feel as though that's a threat. And I think holding people back that really wanna come in and really wanna make a change and really wanna, wanna teach and they wanna learn and they wanna advance in the fire service and they wanna take on more responsibility, holding them back because, hey, you've only been here for five years. Wait till you're 15 years, just sit back in the recliner, we'll get to you. That really kills a lot of people's motivation and that also leads to major burnout. Number four, lack of sleep. I've talked about this again in some of my other videos, but not sleeping or not getting adequate amounts of sleep will literally affect everything else in your life. And this is coming from someone that didn't believe this at all when I was younger, but as I get older, I realize how important it is to get good sleep. Well, I got news for you. If, if you're a firefighter, chances are you're going to be up quite a bit at night. Um, you're running five, 10, hell, some places even run 20 calls in a day. So when you don't sleep, that adds up and that compounds. That affects your, your personal health, that affects your family life, that affects your relationships. It affects everything else and so when you show up at work and you know that, oh God, tonight's just gonna be miserable. I know I'm not gonna go to sleep for the next 24 hours. I'm gonna feel like crap. It can burn people out, especially if you couple it with, with leadership just, just sticks the same people day in and day out doing the exact same things over and over and over and over. It just burns people out, it makes people miserable, it makes people not enjoyable to be around and makes the whole experience worse. Uh, <clears throat> number five, I kind of put this all into one big category, home, life, station drama, financial struggle. Life is tough. Life is confusing. Life can be stressful, whether it be family life, financial things, personal life, personal struggles. When you take all of those things outside of the firehouse and you look, and then you take this person who has all these stressors outside of there and then plop them in a house with three, four, five, ten 10 other people, um, that can cause a lot more stress. Now, obviously that's a part of the job and I'm not suggesting that we shouldn't do that. But what I am saying is when you compound all of the stressors of life and then take that person and plop them in another stressful situation, um, it makes everything worse and it makes them burned out. Now, is that something that they need to sort out? Probably, but what can we do as a fire service to make our time on duty as less stressful and as as, mo as most enjoyable as possible for the 24 hours that we're there? I mean, just the fact that you take a bunch of strangers and stick them in a building to live together for, I mean, they make TV shows out of this, right? Isn't that how a lot of these, these, uh, these, these TV dramas are based on? You take a whole bunch of people, you stick them in a house and watch what happens. That's essentially what the fire service is every day. That's your job. So what can we do as a fire service to make that more enjoyable, to make that less stressful, and to make that work as smoothly as possible? And then finally, number six, I have unhealthy lifestyle. Now, the fact that almost 50% of fire ground deaths are due to cardiac arrest should be a huge, huge warning sign to the entire fire service that too many of us live unhealthy lifestyles. You drink too much, you eat too much, you smoke too much, you don't sleep enough, you don't work out, you eat like crap, right? All of those things compound. So not only do those things compound for your, for your general health, but it also, it just makes you miserable, right? If, you, if you're constantly overweight and you're constantly tired and you're constantly smoking, you're constantly hungover, you're going to get burned out more quickly. It's not going to be easy for you to deal with the day-to-day -day stressors of life and then the huge stressors that happen day-to-day -day in the firehouse. So clean up your lifestyle, lose some weight, stop smoking, start eating healthy, drink more water, clean up your lifestyle, and you're probably going to find yourself um, less stressed and not, no, not so burned out day-to-day. -day. So all of those things are great right? Well, I shouldn't say they're great, but all of those things may be reasons that people get burned out. 
but it doesn't do us any good just to talk about them but not try and come up with solutions to them. So I wanna propose four solutions for maybe you as an individual or uh, things you can do with your crew. Now, I found some of these to be extremely helpful for me, and I'll talk about those here in a second, but let me know what you think about these in the comments below. Number one is almost every firefighter I know has a B job or a backup job or a secondary job. <clears throat> and I'm actually working on a video for best uh, B jobs for firefighters, so be sure to keep an eye out for that. Um, whatever your B job is, whenever you leave the firehouse, make it totally unrelated to firefighting. I know so many men and women that are EMTs, medics, and firefighters, and so they'll go to work and run EMS calls, run fire calls, and then their backup job is they run ambulance calls for another private ambulance company. Well, of course you're gonna get burned out. You're literally doing the exact same thing every single day. So if you can, if you have the option, now obviously everybody's situation is different, and I'm not telling you that if you choose to do that, that that's wrong or bad. If you have the option to get a backup job that is totally unrelated to firefighting, don't work at a part-time place or don't work at a, in an ER as a medic or don't work on an ambulance. Do something totally unrelated so you have an escape. You can get away for 24, 48, 72 hours, however long that you're off. I would highly recommend that. Um, like I said, I've had a lot of secondary jobs. I've tried all sorts of different stuff, so I'm gonna make a video on that. Maybe you'll get some ideas from that and we can go from there. Number two. This is important, develop healthy habits. I just talked about how unhealthy generally the fire service is. On your days off, make sure you take, hell, even if it's just a half an hour, get a workout in, start drinking more water, stop drinking so much alcohol, clean yourself up, start working on healthier habits. Now, obviously that one sounds obvious and everybody, there's gonna be people that watch this and they're like, well, duh, obviously you're supposed to do that. Well then do it. Stop talking, there's no magic pill, there's no secret to this. Start small, start doing little things and start cleaning up your lifestyle, make it a little more healthy. It will affect literally everything else in your life. Number three, I found this to be particularly useful. On nights where you really get beat up at the at the firehouse, maybe you're up between 11 p.m. and 7 a.m., maybe you're up three, four times, five times between those seven or eight hours, I found that the night after, so let's say you work, let's say you go on shift on a Monday morning at 7 a.m. and you get off shift on Tuesday morning at 7 a.m., a full 24 hours. Make sure that Tuesday night you get a full eight hours of street, full eight hours of sleep. Now, you might have to struggle through the day, you might be really tired, but get to bed early. Get to bed at 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and get up at 6 a.m., 5 a.m., 7 a.m., whenever you normally get up. But that first day is so important to rebounding and coming back. I used to think that you might be able to just kind of nap your way through the first day and then you'd be okay, you'd get back on a routine. But again, it's different for everybody, but for me, making sure at the very least that first day, that first night off, you get a full eight hours of sleep. It has done wonders for helping me recover for the rest. We, we work at California Swing Schedule. I know a lot of places do a 24-48. It has done wonders in keeping me on track and helping me recover from a bad night of sleep. And then finally, the last one. And this one ties into a little bit more with the leadership and people getting frustrated and burned out because they don't feel like they have a path to move forward in advance. My recommendation would be how can you bring in younger, maybe not even necessarily inexperienced uh, firefighters into the fire service. Obviously, you're not going to let them run an entire crew for a day. If somebody only has two, three years on, but they're real ambitious, you're not going to say, okay, here's the reins to the crew, do this today. Not a good idea. But what's one little thing that you can allow them to do that they can own this thing? Here's an example. A guy, we have a dive team where I work. And one of the guys on the dive team had I don't know, he had been on for maybe three or four years, and they needed somebody to really take the reins of the dive team, to integrate with the county dive team and all of that, and he volunteered. So the dive team is his thing. Like, he owns this. He's responsible for making sure the gear is done and taken care of. He's responsible for setting up the trainings, and he does a really good job at it. The department, our officers, gave him the opportunity to, hey, here's something that you do. Here's a place where you can own this. There's a book called Drive by Daniel Pink, 
and he talks about autonomy, mastery, and purpose, and giving younger people in the fire service the opportunity to take one little thing. Maybe, maybe you let your new guy teach a class of something that he learned from the fire academy. Now, that doesn't mean that everybody has to change the way everything's done, but give them an opportunity to teach everybody else. Now, this obviously requires everybody setting their egos aside, which is very difficult for me and for everybody. Um, but allow people little bits here and there to to take responsibility for something and try and improve themselves and their crew the best that they can. And I bet you're gonna see morale spike quite a bit. So as always, I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you liked it. If you did, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing to the channel. And if you have any insight as to things that uh, burned you out or how you got past it or how you worked through it, please leave it in the comments below. This is a big community. This is a growing community. And if there's anything that we can all do to help each other, by all means, throw it out there. So hope you found that helpful. I'll see you guys in the next video.